Re Zero, Side Story, Felt Chan's Royal Selection Life from Zero, Part 1. Ever since she was little, she had been seeing one certain dream over and over again. It was a dream which began in a dimly lit room, in a room where only the moonlight was streaming in, she was gazing up at the ceiling. The ceiling was high. It felt like she had been pushed inside a small box, rather than laying down on a bed. Question mark, are you really sure about this? Suddenly, she heard the voice of someone. When she tried to look at where it came from, her body would not move. It was not because it was a dream. Even if this was not a dream, during this moment, her body would not move the way she wanted it to. She simply, somehow felt like this was the right thing to do. Question mark, yes, I'm sure. I can already imagine my brother or wife objecting to it, if they ever happen to know about this. She could also hear a reply, the voice sounding different from the first person who had spoken. It seemed like someone and someone were talking to each other, standing on opposite sides of the box that contained her. The voices sounded as if they were familiar, but also unfamiliar to her at the same time. Perhaps, the reason for why the voices felt ambiguous was her own problem. However, she could clearly feel the emotions brimming within the voices. The familiar voice was filled with disgust, while the unfamiliar voice was filled with affection. Although, disgust and affection. Neither of those were what she desired, nor yearned for. Question mark, I'm indebted to ye all. If I can return what I owe, then I don't mind taking on this job. Question mark, thank you. I'm sorry for troubling you, dash. Question mark, ye shouldn't be worrying about me. You're concerned for the wrong person. Question mark, you're right. A cold, sharp voice, and a voice that regulated its emotions firmly. Inside the box where she could only see the ceiling, her gaze met with someone's face when they peeked in. For some reason, a shadow was cast upon the face, and she could not see it because it was smudged black. However, she knew the person was the owner of golden hair and red eyes. Question mark, the person gently lifted her body, picking her up from the inside of the box. They were quite large in size, no, she was small. Almost as if she were an infant. The owner of the voice held her effortlessly, rocking her softly. Question mark, ah, you're warm. And you've become heavier. Someday, there will be a time when you'll grow up, so much that my arms won't be enough to hold you, the man said, whilst embracing her. His voice almost sounded as if it were trembling. Held in the man's arms, she felt his heart beat. It was a strangely calming sound, one that made her want to cry. Question mark, I'll leave the rest to you. Suddenly, her ears were pulled away from the sound. The man handed over the infant in his arms to the person in front of him. The person's palm was calloused, large, and treated her roughly, just like her impression of him. She felt ill at ease, completely different from a moment ago. It was not only because of the hardened skin of the palm, question mark, lending a hand to some human. How far I've fallen, the person who had placed her on his palm was staring at her, his gaze being a mixture of disgust and disdain. It was greatly irritating to the infant's heart, she did not like it. She wanted to cry out. However, her small limbs could not break free, question mark, enveloped by the calloused palm, even her freedom of speech had been seized. Like that, the man started walking with heavy footsteps. She was being taken away from the familiar room, as well as the calming man. She did not want that. She didn't. She hated it, she pleaded for that man to stay with her. She wanted him to stay by her side. She did not want him to let her go, even so. Question mark, I love you. Forever and ever, an unhelpful voice that did not offer any relief. It was the last thing he had said to her. Part 2 Question mark, it's morning, huh? Her eyelids were warmed by the morning sun streaming through the gap in the curtains, and her consciousness floated up to the surface, with the sensation of the soft bed wrapping around her whole body, the girl sat up whilst drawing the sheets closer to herself. She scratched her neck length, golden hair rather violently, and absently turned her neck as she yawned, entering her teary-eyed, blurred vision was the room she became used to seeing during these two months. Question mark, geez, the room is annoyingly huge as always. Inside the luxurious room that anyone would be jealous of, 
the girl muttered with dissatisfaction as she clambered off of the bed of the highest quality. Having just woken up, the girl stood on the shaggy rug with nothing but her undergarments on her pale body. She had a small frame for her age, and her body lacked feminine curves, however, her well-proportioned face and her strong-willed eyes contained a glimpse of beauty, giving her a promising future when her charm would bloom into a flower. Her name was Felt. She was a notorious problem child in the past, having made a living in the slums of the royal capital with her skill in stealing. However, the position resting upon her shoulders as of now was wildly different. The main factor of the dramatic change in the environment around her was, question mark, are you awake, felt summer, with the door to the room being knocked on, felt could hear a clear, beautiful voice from the other side. Simply listening to it would make one have high hopes for the owner of the voice to have a pure heart and an elegant appearance. In reality, when people would look at the owner of this beautiful voice in the capital, most women would let out screams of admiration and then proceed to faint. Even so, despite being a very young woman, Felt curled her lip with apparent distaste, and then, glaring at the owner of the voice from the other side of the door, Felt, nope, I'm not awake. I'm not awake, so don't come in. Question mark, you are able to establish a conversation by talking in your sleep? If that is the case, you have developed a new talent, one I do not know of, Felt, you're damn annoying. Upon clicking her tongue at how he did not understand the sarcasm in her tone, the door to the room opened slowly. Like that, a tall, young, and refined man made his appearance, dressed in a shirt and a pair of pants. His red hair, reminiscent of flames, and his blue eyes that engulfed the azure sky were his defining characteristics. What distinguished him even further was his unpleasantly handsome face, and he was directing a smile at felt one that would cause the maidens in the capital to collapse. However, his smile had vanished the moment he saw Felt's appearance when he entered the room. Question mark, Felt Summer. Although this is your room, a woman walking around in her undergarments is a little, Felt, I just woke up. Besides, I already told you to not come in. You're the one who didn't listen, so don't blame me. In nothing but her underwear, Felt crossed her arms and stuck her slim chest out in the middle of the room. The young man frowned, averting his gaze from her valiant pose. The interaction was between a young man and woman, but there was no embarrassment associated with it. Felt saw the person in front of her as something different before she thought of him as a man. Letting out a snort, Felt gazed up at the young man as he looked away from her. Felt, or does the greatest knight among knights have the capacity to get excited by a miserable-looking body like mine? If that's it, then I would have to be even more careful about my surroundings, won't I? Question mark, please do not demean yourself with words such as miserable-looking. You have a charm that is unique to yourself. Moreover, it is preposterous for a knight to have their heart swayed by their master, Felt, who told you to console me about my childlike body shape? Get out. As she threw a pillow from her bed, the young man caught it effortlessly and politely stepped back out of the room. He walked out into the hallway, and then slowly bent over into a bow. Question mark, breakfast is ready. Auntie is also waiting, so please come to the dining room. Felt, I get it, I get it. Just go, question mark, understood. Pardon me, I will be taking my leave. Also, felt summer. While Felt waved her hand half-heartedly as if she were chasing off a bug, the young man smiled at her, having tossed the pillow he had received back onto the bed with an excellent throw. And then, keeping the same expression on his face, he said, question mark, good morning, Felt, that part of you just never fails to get on my nerves. Get the hell out, Reinhard. Felt's first shout of anger in the morning had been scattered in four directions, blocked off by the door that had been closed quietly. Irritated by the feeling of losing the argument for no particular reason, Felt pulled out her clothes from the cabinet, and hastily took off her undergarments. As the only act of defiance she could do, she decided to pick an outfit that Reinhard might dislike. Part 3 the reason why Felt was accompanied by Reinhard and staying in his mansion was the result of several events, and a coincidental, unavoidable circumstance all becoming tightly entangled. Reinhard had referred to all of that as fate, but Felt absolutely hated how it sounded. 
she was unable to stomach how he thought everything had been decided from the very beginning. More than anything, they had the worst encounter and their process of getting to know each other was equally as terrible. With their already complicated relationship, just imagining how everything between them was predetermined had aggravated her, to felt, it was like being told she was destined to draw the short end of the stick. That was the honest opinion of Felt, who had obtained the status of the mistress of Reinhard van Astria, the knight among knights that everyone in the capital was envious of. Question mark. Oh, Felt. Year up pretty early today. Felt. Ah, once Felt had gotten dressed and exited her room, she came across a large silhouette of a person. The person was a hulking man, gigantic to the point the petite Felt really had to look up at him. If they had met in a back alley, the difference in their physiques would make Felt be prepared to die. Fortunately, however, this was not a desolate alleyway, and she was also not unacquainted with that person. Actually, phrasing it as such was unnecessary because of the close and long-lasting relationship between them. Felt, morning, wrong G. I don't really wanna wake up early, but if I stay in this mansion, I tend to get woken up like a good citizen. Her face brightening up, Felt ran towards the person she had called Romji, a bald, old man with a large frame of over two meters. She had a tender expression on her face, appearing incomparably adorable in contrast to when she had been dealing with Reinhard. Rom's shoulders shook with laughter as Felt unleashed a cute charm befitting of her age. Rom, wahaha, being a good citizen is a nice thing, since you're tiny for your age. If ye eat properly and live an orderly life, you'll grow taller, felt, from your perspective, it practically won't make any difference even if I grow or shrink. Like, barely any difference, Rom, that ain't true. Even though I'm like this, I pay close attention to your growth. Saying that, a smile spread across Rom's deeply wrinkled face, and he patted her head roughly, felt remembered thinking her head might fall off when she was little, but she did not dislike the feeling of the calloused palm. In fact, she was fond of it. There was a time when she did not want to be treated like a child, but in all honesty, moments like these were the best at making her feel at ease. By chance, the dimly lit room from her dreams crossed her mind. Felt, Rom, hmm? What's the matter? Felt, felt, ah, ah, it's nothing. Never mind that, were you able to sleep well? Felt put on a smile and asked him, shaking off the strangely sentimental feeling that struck her chest. Receiving her question, Rom answered, don't be silly, while slapping his bald head. Rom, if you're asking me whether I was able to sleep or not, then yes, I did sleep. But, I can't say it was comfortable. Felt, that's true. Life here is way too different compared to what we know. Rom, yes. Well, although that ain't the only reason for my lack of comfort, Rom tilted his head while placing a hand on his chin, with Felt copying his gesture. He laughed at her imitation, then urged her to start walking by patting her on the back. Rom, hey, it seems like breakfast's ready. I can have high expectations for how it tastes, right? Felt, yeah, Granny's meals are super duper good. She's the best at making snacks, though. Rom listened quietly to Felt's boastful praise, nodding as she blabbered along. They continued to have their pleasant chat while they walked down the hallway. Felt, hmm? Boo, they're going at it again. Pausing in front of the window, Felt peered into it. The green garden of the mansion belonging to Reinhard stretched out below her, and a sight she had become familiar with was unfolding in there. Rom, what in the world are they doing? Felt, it's just that warped personalities don't straighten up easily, so they're in the process of getting their characters beaten back into shape. Rom asked, standing next to her, and Felt answered him whilst propping up her arms on the frame of the window, her chin resting in her hands. In the garden carrying and relaxed atmosphere, where the fresh grass and flowers of various colors flourished, three men were sprawled across the grass, piled on top of each other. They had quite the boorish appearance, lying on the ground in a fully unconscious state, and then, there was an elderly man tending to the grass beside the trio. His expression remained indifferent as he brought a wheelbarrow with practiced ease, placing the three men on top of it with little effort, and then wheeled them away towards the back door of the mansion. Watching the process to the end, Felt smiled whilst showing off her fang. Felt, apparently, 
they had nowhere left to go because they angered a higher up, so they chose to follow us as a last resort, but they changed their mind after one night and were about to run away. Then, they were found out by Gramps in the middle of their escape, and got beaten up by him. Rom, I see. I guess it's a typical conclusion, but did he predict this? Felt, if we could understand each other by talking it out, then they wouldn't be here, both in a good way and a bad way. Isn't it more interesting to make those nasty guys tag along? Felt did not dislike those who never knew when to give up, nor those with unpreferable personalities. The area she had lived in was a den full of people like that, the trio was certainly the representation of Felt's home environment. However, no matter what, she would not be blindly optimistic about it by declaring it as a good thing. Rom, should that be described as tolerant or optimistic? Perhaps it's in the blood. Felt, hmm? Did you say something, Romji? Felt clasped her hands together behind her head, turning around to face Rom as he murmured something out. He simply shrugged his large shoulders in response to her words. Rom, oh, I just said I'm hungry. Here, hurry up and get walking. Felt, yeah, yeah, got it. Prompted to get a move on, Felt took Rom with her as she started walking in the mansion. She did not wish for it but she had become accustomed to her life inside the residence within the span of two months, at least, to the point she would be walking with a bounce in her steps if she was on the way to the dining room. Felt, morning, with great anticipation for breakfast in her heart, Felt arrived at the dining fall, having brought Rom along with her. Upon opening the large doors and entering the room, the long table was already lined with steaming plates of breakfast, and then, turning around at Felt's cheerful entry, Two shadows bowed to her, question mark, certainly, felt summer. Good morning, question mark, an elderly woman and man had responded to her greeting with gentle smiles. They were entrusted with the management of the mansion, and their duties included taking care of Felt and Reinhard. Reinhard seemed to have a close relationship with them, referring to them as uncle and auntie. Meanwhile, Felt got along with them, simply calling them Gramps and Granny, question mark. Reinhard was already seated at the dining table, and three young men were forced to sit at the same row as him, their eyes rolled against the back of their heads. Their physiques were large, average, and petite respectively, easy to understand, and they were placed in their seats in the order of their heights. Furthermore, Felt's regular spot was in front of Reinhard, and Rom would be sitting next to her during this morning. She pulled out Rom's chair, then settled into her own seat, and, Felt, all right. So, time to dig in, Reinhard. There is no problem with that, but are you sure there is no need for an explanation regarding those three? My very first thought was that you would be surprised by them. He was taken aback by how Felt was about to start eating without making any mention of the trio. Listening to his words, she scratched her ear with a finger, muttering out a, ah, Felt, I saw Gramps bring them along with him from above. Plus, I thought it would be something like this since yesterday. I already told Granny and Gramps, right, Auntie, indeed. Felt Summer spoke to us last night, Felt leaned against the back of her chair, tilting her head, and Auntie returned a nod. And then, the woman who had aged with grace chuckled as she gave her husband a sidelong glance, Auntie, Grandpa over here was probably delighted that you have relied on him. Unbecoming for his age, he was full of vigor, waiting at the garden since dawn. Uncle, uncle wordlessly shrugged at auntie's testimony. It was rare for the taciturn uncle to even utter a word, so no one had reprimanded him for his manners, which could be taken as improper. Suddenly, auntie gazed at Felt with a mischievous look in her eyes. Auntie, anyway, it is quite an interesting thing. You had been attempting to break free from the mansion with utmost effort, yet now you are reminding us to ensure those three did not escape. Felt, Hey, hey, did you have to say that, Rom, huh, you mean Felt was trying to escape? What do you mean by that? As Felt made a face at the remark she could not counter, Rom's eyes gleamed with curiosity beside her. Looking at his reaction, Reinhard began to speak with A, to tell the truth. The red-haired young man had an innocuous look, his blue eyes traveling across the entire mansion as if he were surveying it. Reinhard, a promise has been made with Felt Summer. If she was able to sneak out of the mansion, unobserved by myself, uncle, auntie, 
and the other residents, then we will not track her down against her will, Ron, a competition, I see. That makes sense. I can see Felt taking it personally when someone picks a fight with her. She was probably suffering defeat every day, then, Felt, D don't say it like you've actually watched it. That's why I didn't want you to hear about it, Ron pointed it out with a smug look, causing Felt to bury her head into her hands with a reddened face. Everything had begun ever since she had been captured by Reinhard in the slums, and confined to this mansion by his hand. Since then, she had exchanged a promise of the competition that Reinhard had explained earlier, and she was desperately searching for a way to escape during night and day. Of course, as a result of her plans failing one after another, Felt had been staying in this mansion like this, and on top of all of that was yesterday's events. Yesterday's events were a serious matter for Felt, no, it was a grave matter even for the kingdom of Lagunica. Felt, the royal selection. The battle to take the throne? Are you hecking kidding me? Why did you have to involve me in that unbelievable situation? Reinhard, to be precise, it is a competition to be selected to accede to the throne, not a battle to take the throne. A competition, not a battle, Felt, that's not the damn problem. You're misunderstanding me, Felt glared at Reinhard's nonchalant face, her lower lip jutting out. The royal selection, it was the very event that took place in the Dragon Kingdom of Lagunica, a grand incident that shook the country to its roots. As far back as a few months ago, due to a contagious disease that occurred in the castle, the members of the long-lasted royal family had collapsed one by one, and at last, every one of them had passed away. As a result, the throne of the current kingdom had fallen vacant, and was placed in a worrying state of instability. The kingdom was in a situation where it had to pick out the next king as soon as possible, but as some kind of joke, it was none other than Felt who had been set up as one of the candidates to the throne. The person who had forcefully dragged her into that unbelievable situation was Reinhard, sitting in front of her with an innocent look on his face, and that was his true objective for confining Felt to the mansion. Of course, there was no way anyone could unconditionally become a candidate for the next king. Not to mention Felt came from the slums, a street child who made a living through thievery. What could have gone wrong for someone like her to stand on the stage of competing for the throne? Perhaps it would be more appropriate to question Reinhard's sanity. However, in the face of Felt's unknown origins, Reinhard had announced an outrageous theory to everyone in the castle. According to him, Felt was a surviving member of the royal family, having been kidnapped fourteen years ago. Such a theory was not worth a single thought of consideration, and it was also a load of ludicrous nonsense to Felt's ears. Yet, the associates of the royal castle had all taken Reinhard at his word, and had begun examining the possibilities in earnest. That fact was also ridiculous, so Felt had been sneering at them. However, Felt, with the thing with Rom G, it all got ruined. Ha, huh. Rom had snuck into the castle in an attempt to rescue Felt. His plan ended in failure, and Felt had to declare her participation in the royal selection to free him from his capture. He had apologized profusely for what he did, but Felt did not regret her decision. She had made her own choice. Felt had already admonished herself to not be rueful over what she had chosen. To live was a chain of illogical events. Unreasonable things descended on people without giving them any measures to take against them. They were what they were. In a world where such inconveniences ran rampant, what would she expect from extending her whining and complaining to even what she had decided for herself? Such a foolish thing did not exist. That was Felt's conclusion, and her philosophy of life. Felt, that's why I only hate unreasonable things. To sum it up, it's you, Reinhard. Reinhard, you are being quite critical, Felt Summer. I am unreasonable? Felt, no way. I won't let you say you aren't aware of it. If you're the type of person who can't even see what's right below his feet, then I don't want to talk to you at all. Reinhard, you are being quite critical. Reinhard repeated himself with a troubled expression, aimed at Felt's scathing words. Anyway, setting aside her dissatisfaction with Reinhard, Felt did not regret her choice. Of course, Rom had been the trigger, and Reinhard was the one who had dragged her out into that place. However, Hearing the speeches delivered by the four other candidates firsthand, the various advocations made by the influential people of the kingdom, who had gathered at one location, 
It was true that passion had begun simmering inside a felt, she did not know the specifics of what she could do yet, even so, as long as this passion continued to urge her on, she had decided that she would not stop moving forward, felt, though, I feel like there's a lot of weird stuff going on in the royal selection, Reinhard, do you have any queries concerning the royal selection, felt, well, anyone would think it's strange. Even if my birthplace or whatever was shoved aside, what kind of standards are being used to pick the candidates of the king, although felt did not undergo education, she could imagine a mountain of abilities and talents that would be required for one to possess in order to become king, despite the fact that the royal family had been wiped out, it would not lessen the weight of the blood that ran under one's veins. If a noble's lineage, close to the original royal family was to be chosen, gifted people would be nominated as candidates, and that would be the natural course of events. However, every one of the candidates who had stepped onto the stage of the royal selection alongside felt, had all carried a uniqueness that was particular to each of them, but it was hard to say whether they met those kinds of criterias. Felt, a merchant from some other country, and a high-handed woman acting like she's the most important person in the world. There's also the half-elf girl. There was only one noble woman, but then there's me. This isn't a game, damn it, Reinhard, of course, everyone is aware of that. However, the glow of the insignia has chosen you and the other candidates. It is the will of the divine dragon who protects the kingdom, felt, so, are you saying the dragon is a womanizer? How weird are its tastes, choosing me and all that? Are ugly people included in its tastes? There were five royal selection candidates, and every one of them was a woman. As felt mocked the truth of it, Reinhard looked like he had no clue of how to answer that. Auntie, now, now, how could you say such a thing, felt summer, auntie said in place of the hesitant Reinhard, butting into the conversation. She had been listening to the conversation in silence, but her brows were knitted, as if she could not put up with felt's words for any longer. Felt, what's it, granny? You're mad because I badmouthed the dragon? Auntie, no, it is not because of that. I am angry because you have belittled yourself. Calling yourself ugly. Even though you were this lovely. Auntie is saddened, felt, wah? You're mad at me about myself, upon displaying her astonishment towards the unexpected interruption, Romji folded his arms beside her with a nod. Even uncle was nodding deeply next to auntie, and felt suddenly felt out of place. Rom, listen, felt. I also think your appearance is not bad, felt. Okay, time to drop the topic. How I look doesn't matter at all. That isn't even the problem. Hey, bring back the original topic. Talk about the topic before this, Reinhard. Reinhard, me, sensing that the conversation would take a turn into something awkward, felt cut Rom off and drew Reinhard out to make him talk. He seemed surprised at her momentum, and then blew out a short sigh. Reinhard, ah, yes. I understand your concerns surrounding the royal selection. I cannot fathom the divine dragon's preferences, but the first encounter of the kingdom and the dragon, when the covenant was exchanged between the kingdom of Lagunica and the divine dragon, the person who had conversed with the dragon was recorded as a woman, said to be the dragon maiden, Rom, and then, in the current situation where conversing with the dragon once more is highly desired, the next dragon maiden would be chosen among the women. I'm assuming that's how ye interpreted it, Reinhard, if you could, please consider it as the consensus of the kingdom, not only myself, felt, those are the opinions of bigwigs like nobles and knights, right? For evidence, the people in the slums never heard such a thing, like me over here, as a representative of the lower classes, she did not welcome any efforts for one to have their way with her, using the consensus of the kingdom as an excuse. Reinhard's troubled expression against Felt's opinion remained on his face. Reinhard, are you stating that you are against the royal selection? Felt, I'm just saying there's a lot of things that make no sense. Ah, more than being against it, I have a complaint. I didn't have the right to choose my knight. Can't you do something about it? Reinhard, as much as I would like to take your requests into consideration, I believe it will be a difficult task to entrust you to another knight, unfortunately. With all due respect, you have lashed out at the knights and the people of importance at the scene of the selection, 
so I presume that it will be a struggle to find someone who could make a pledge to dedicate their sword to, felt, I know, okay. I'm just being sarcastic. It can't be helped, so I guess I'll put up with you, Reinhard, yes, please bear with me. This body of mine, this sword, everything is for you, felt summer, felt, uck, so annoying, felt stuck out her tongue at Reinhard's overly formal response, taking Reinhard's reputation within the kingdom into account, anyone would be perplexed by felt's attitude towards him. However, every person in this mansion, including Reinhard himself, did not reprove her for it. In fact, they saw her attitude in a favorable light, Rom, well, it's what felt decided for herself. I don't plan on complaining about this and that at this time, but. I can't deny we're somewhat inadequate as a royal selection team. Once the topic at hand had reached a stopping point, Rom muttered that out whilst patting his bald head. The felt camp, one of the teams about to start fighting in the royal selection, setting the leader, felt aside, it included Reinhard, her number one knight. Rom, who was basically her family. The married couple who was involved with the Astria family and managed the mansion, and lastly, Reinhard, these three, who have been remaining unconscious for a terribly long time, felt, doesn't it feel good to have nothing? I'm starting to find this fun, Reinhard, fun, as felt contorted her face with a smirk, Rom and Reinhard simultaneously stared at her in wonder. Receiving their gazes, she showed her fang with a, isn't that right, felt, no one expects anything from us. No matter what you think of it, it'll be even more of a sight if we flip over the situation from there. This is our advantage, Rom and Reinhard, felt boasted with a remarkable amount of assertiveness, slapping her own slender chest, hearing her overly confident stance on the matter, Rom and Reinhard were unable to utter anything at the moment. Instead, what made the time resume its ticking was a loud clap. Auntie, come now, let's proceed with dining instead of conversing for eternity. Wonderful ideas will not come to your mind if you are hungry. Grandpa says so, as well, Uncle, H, as Auntie said that whilst clapping her hands, Uncle widened his eyes at his name being used to her advantage. Seeing the married couple's interaction, felt accidentally burst into laughter. After that, she cracked her neck, and then grabbed her fork and knife to eat her long-awaited breakfast, she learned some manners during these two months, at least, Reinhard, felt summer, felt, there's proper etiquette for this, right? I know, I know, Reinhard, yes, please, it was terribly vexing to have something pointed out by Reinhard even during one meal, in the future, could there be a possibility that he would give her instructions for anything and everything for the sake of the royal selection? If so, felt, maybe this'll be the first time I'll regret my own choice. Like that, felt sated her hunger, squashing out her bitterness with the delicious breakfast. Part 4 With breakfast coming to an end, felt returned to the room that was hers for the time being, keeping a careful eye on the time before heading out to the mansion's garden after a while and then, there was the trio, sprawled out on the grass yet again, felt, don't you guys feel dizzy, getting that desperate even though you missed breakfast? Plus, it's not lunch time yet, stepping on the grass, felt stood next to the trio, tilting her head at their state. They were in the same situation as during the morning, except they were not tidied out of the way, probably because they would not be a bother to uncle's work. Adding to that, Uncle had determined they would be unable to move despite leaving them unattended. Question mark. S.H. Shut up. How dare you mess with us, a sharp-eyed man had said first upon looking at Felt's gaze, his voice rich with spite, lying down on the grass with their limbs spread out, among the three men whose heights were large, medium, and small respectively, the man with an average build and a face full of caution, his name was, Felt, I'm not messing with you, Lackins. Actually, I'm a little impressed. I only have one body, so I couldn't split up and get on the move like you three. However, it must be said that although they could cooperate with each other, it was hopeless if they were defeated one by one. Question mark, W what the hell is that old man? He disappeared from my sight when I thought I grabbed him. Question mark, to me, it looked like you were bouncing around on your own and then fell over. Gaston, Gaston, there's no way I would do anything crazy like that, 
The large Gaston and the tiny Camberley were exchanging words, sounding exhausted. They appeared to be less hot-blooded compared to Lacan's, but all three of them seemed to balance each other very well. Anyway, Felt could agree with a certain point in their after-action review. Felt, I feel you, totally. Gramps gave me a terrible time just like you guys. But, don't get the wrong idea. Gramps is like that, but his methods are the most gentle. Granny and Reinhard are way more merciless than him. Especially Reinhard, he's the worst. It's like he's trying to break our spirit, Gaston. Oh, oh, okay, I see. Felt stories about her struggles began flowing out like a river. When it came to planning an escape from House Astria, Felt had more than ten times the amount of experience compared to the trio. However, she did not intend to divulge further information, since she would only be venting out her frustration, as there was not a single attempt which had ended in success. Lackins, rather than that, you don't have any complaints against us? Lackins asked out of the blue, sitting cross-legged on the grass whilst raising his eyes to look at Felt. Felt, complaints. Me? Why? Lackins, why, you ask? I mean, we three are trying to escape. He spoke honestly with an embarrassed expression, causing Felt to smile wryly. Felt, well, I expected you guys would try and escape. Though, I don't even think I was able to be on friendly terms with you all from that short chat from yesterday. Felt shrugged her slim shoulders, gazing at the faces of each individual. Lackins's group will be accepted into the Felt camp. She had decided to take the first step with her choice. Yesterday, on the way back home from the castle, where Felt had announced her intention to participate in the royal selection, she and her companions had stopped by at the loot house, their old home, and encountered the trio at the site of the demolished building. They had pointed a knife at Felt, threatening her to fork over her money, but their opponent was completely out of their league. In the blink of an eye, the trio had been thoroughly defeated by Reinhard, who had been present, and originally, they would have been delivered to the guards. Felt had prevented that, and also extended a hand to them. It was not as if Felt had been unable to help herself, nor did she take action out of sympathy. She simply thought it would be interesting to win over those three as her allies, and to have them accompany her. If she were to keep moving in order to become king, she would purposefully choose a refreshing lot of people to bring with her, if things were going to be that way. She had brought them to the mansion for that reason, told them the whole story behind her actions, and made them promise their cooperation, but, felt, minds change once you cool down. I was also raised in the slums, you know. It's easy to see through the true natures of the people who live there. Camberley, huh? That doesn't really sound like we're being complimented. Lackins, that's because it's not even a compliment. Stop screwing around, damn it. Felt, it's good that you guys are stubborn, but you probably didn't even think it through before trying to escape, right? You sounded like you were all being chased by someone else in the first place. Lackins, gah. They had invoked the ire of their superior because they had messed up at work. Their conversation had gone like that, if she remembered correctly. In other words, even if they fled from felt, they would have to keep running from owning up to their mistake, so it was unsuitable as a solution to the root of the problem. Gaston, W.H., what should we do? Camberley, I thought it would work out somehow. Though, I don't have anything to support that, as Felt had thought, the trio did not have anyone or anything they could rely on. That foolhardiness about them showed that they were residents of the slums, indeed. Even among the residents, she felt like they were a little too rash. However, Felt, there isn't much stuff I can say. It's just. This place is much better compared to trying to escape as a conditioned response. Well, I won't tell you to listen to me no matter what or anything like that, Gaston, but, that's just going to be a loss for you. If you were raised in slums, I can't think of a reason why you'd lend a hand to us, even though you won't get anything in return. Felt, my reason for lending a hand, Gaston muttered out in a low voice, gazing at Felt. Lackens and Camberley were also staring at her in the same fashion, causing her to scratch her head from having their eyes on her. Lackens, it's just as Gaston said. Lending a hand to us even if you won't get anything in return? Impossible. No one would think they wouldn't be treated as a sacrificial pawn, if you tell them to believe you like that. Camberley, huh? 
But weren't you saying we could try believing in her yesterday, Gaston? Shut up for a little while, Camberley. As Camberley said something he could have kept to himself, Gaston grabbed his face with the palm of his hand. With the forcefully silenced Camberley behind him, Lackins continued to glare at Felt. Lackins, what's your objective? What do you really want to make us do, Felt? I told you everything about my plans yesterday. Felt closed one of her eyes in response to his doubt-filled eyes. The trio had asked her an identical question the day before, and she had given them the same answer. She did not make a sincere plea with them. She had only invited them to come along with her. Felt, a lot of people piss you off, right? That's why I'm inviting you all to make them pay. And you guys are worried because? You don't know what kind of role you're supposed to take up, I guess. Lackins, the moment she uttered that one sentence, Lackins's facial expression had morphed into something else. Gaston and Camberley saw his face, casting worried glances towards him. Presumably, Lackins was the one who made the most decisions out of the three. However, he was also the easiest to sway, so it seemed like the other two provided him with their support. Such was the nature of their relationship, they had come this far as a group of three, yet they held no confidence within themselves. What led Felt to invite them in was not much of a proper reason, and they were not wanted in the sense of being absolutely necessary to her team. Not to mention they had been living their life in the slums. They did not know why they were chosen, because they understood they had nothing to pride themselves on, more so than anyone else. Felt, don't worry. I don't know what to do either, Lackins. Ah, Felt, I told you, didn't I? I grew up in the slums, but now I'm suddenly set up as a royal selection candidate. If I was full of motivation, and if I were to say that I already made up my mind on what to do and what to achieve, I would be a monster. The monster's my knight, not me. Reinhard was a monster in terms of physical abilities, but he was quite unreliable when it came to other things. Felt, so, I can't tell you guys to start working your butts off out of the blue, and I won't say it, too. Lackins, th, then, what are you planning to do? Felt, I'm saying, let's start thinking about it after this. I have to learn so many things, and it's definitely gonna be a pain to study. But, maybe you could throw away your belief that you have nothing, you know? At Felt's fang smile, Lackins and the other two exchanged dumbfounded glances. They had nothing. It was the same for Felt, who had no idea of what to do with herself. That was why, as fellow people who possessed matching personal problems, they could at least chatter away and argue amongst themselves while moving forward. Camberley, I'm thinking I can go with you, Missy. Unexpectedly, Camberley had been the first to say that. Having been carried on Gaston's shoulder, Camberley clenched his fists in front of Felt as he was lowered onto the grass. Camberley, it's a little too difficult for me to understand, but now I know which one is easier to understand. It would be really bad for us even if we ran away from here, so, he turned around, nodding at Lackins and Gaston, Camberley, let's reconsider it. Even if we apologize to that Russell and he were to forgive us, our positions as errand boys will never change, right, Gaston, to think I've been convinced by you. That hadn't happened since I picked up Lackins from the back alley. He was like a ragged piece of cloth back then, Lackins, shut up. Gaston said that while laughing wryly, and then Lackens barked out a retort at his words. However, it was also a sign that the two had allowed themselves to relax and show their agreement with Camberley. The balance had tipped over. As for which direction it had had tilted towards, Felt understood that well enough. Lackens, just saying, but we'll be ready to escape at any moment if things start turning against us. Gaston, we'll also filch any valuables along the way. Camberley, if it comes to suddenly turning aggressive and running away, no one does it better than us. The trio declared respectively, finally making their choice to join the Felt camp. Felt gave them a contented smile, and then crossed her arms. Felt, I'll tell you this, but even if you throw Gramps and the others off guard, they still won't have any mercy on you guys. Gaston, Lackins, and Camberley. W we won't do anything like that, we aren't even planning to, we'll only try a little. The more they spoke, the more their true intentions were exposed. Well, Felt could laugh it off as an easily comprehensible fault of people who had been raised in the slums. Part 5 
Rom, it seems like you're unexpectedly motivated to do this, felt, Rom G, after spending a few heartwarming moments with the trio at the garden, felt was about to return to her room, only to be greeted by Rom in front of it, he had a good-natured old man's look on his fierce, scary face, which caused felt to scratch the tip of her nose with a, oh, you were watching, felt, it's not like I can just run away from it right now. Also, I don't want to lose when I decided I would do it. You also don't remember raising a loser, right, Rom, I raised you to make sure you wouldn't get discouraged from getting tossed around by the harsh realities of the world, but with that, he might be more of a first-class student than I thought, felt, hey, give me a break, treating me like a first-class student and all that. It doesn't suit me, felt shook her head at Rom's words whilst laughing mischievously. Rom narrowed his eyes at her reaction, with deep emotion surfacing onto his face for some reason, strangely, a forlorn feeling tugged at her when she saw his face, and felt stiffened her expression. And then, although she was deciding this out of all times, she asked him a question that she had to ask, felt, you know. We couldn't really talk because yesterday was like, a really busy day, right? But, you know, I have something I wanna ask you, Rom, what, you're being unlike yourself. You're acting like an ordinary little lass, felt. You're right, I'm not acting like myself. I get it. Then I'll just say it, with Rom jabbing at her hesitation, Felt took a deep breath before looking at him straight in the eye, and then, she announced what she had declared back at the castle once more, Felt, I'm participating in the royal selection. It's annoying how this is going the way Reinhard wanted it to, but I also talked it out with Lackens and his group. I also ran my mouth in front of so many people, saying, I'll do it. But that's not enough, Rom, hmm, not enough, you say, Felt, actually, this is just me being selfish, so I wasn't planning to make you come with me. But if you aren't here, I'll be worried and I won't have the confidence that I'll make it. So, Rom, Felt, I want you to help me. I want you, my only family, to stay together with me, to Felt, the only person she could trust was the elderly man in front of her, without exaggeration. Ever since she became aware of her surroundings, she had been raised in the unforgiving environment of the slums. Rom had always been there beside her. Felt had been taught how to live, learned how to use things to her advantage, and had been gifted with her life. Even after she had matured and started living separately from him, she did not believe that the distance between their hearts had widened. She strongly felt that way even in the present. Rom, what are your thoughts on your origins? Felt, Rom, the young sword saint said it at the castle that you're the daughter of the topmost family in Lagunica, and also that ye might be the infant who was kidnapped from there. That ye had a family. What, felt, you're my only family, Rom G, felt exclaimed, cutting off Rom's hoarse voice, Rom, he stood still, his face stiffening at her response. She angled back her head to gaze up at his face, biting her lip before beginning to speak, felt, I don't know if that's actually true. I'm not interested either. My only family is you, the person who stayed together with me since I was a kid. I don't give a damn about the people who aren't here anymore, or weren't even here to begin with. She was not putting up a brave front, nor was it a bluff. Those were her genuine, true feelings, whether it concerned where she was born or who was her kin, the information that her surroundings had made a scene about was a trivial matter to her, and she couldn't care less about it. What was important to her was the person who had stuck with her. That was all, that was why she wanted that person to stay with her even from now on. That was all, Rom, oh well, that's really unlike yourself. Having received the full attention of Felt's gaze, Rom broke into a smile. He let out a sigh, looking as if he had been taken aback, and stroked his bald head slowly. Rom, if it were ye from a little while ago, you wouldn't have told me about this beforehand. You would have dragged me into this as ye pleased, and then stick your tongue out as if ye just didn't do that. I still haven't forgotten the day when the loot house got blown away, felt, ah. No, that was my fault for jumping on a sweet deal, Rom, I. It wouldn't have turned into a load of baloney if ye at least discussed it with me. So, as felt reflected on her mistakes with slumped shoulders, a large palm caressed the sulking girl's head, and then, 
he crouched over to Felt, who appeared to be surprised. Rom, if I don't stay next to her and watch over her, my granddaughter'll keep being a handful. I can't go into retirement in peace like that, Felt, Rom G, as Rom said that with a laugh, Felt's face brightened. Wondering where her previous anxiousness and nervousness had gone, Rom shrugged exasperatedly at her rapidly shifting attitude. Perhaps Felt had grown embarrassed at how her reaction went from one extreme to the other, as her cheeks flushed as she quietly escaped from Rom's palm, which had been resting on her head. Felt, Al all right, it's decided, then. With this, I won't have to come across a situation where you shriveled up and died while I'm unaware. It's worth celebrating or something, Rom, yes, yes, I get it, I get it. Either way, I wasn't even planning on leaving ye and returning to the slums. I guess I'll have ye do your best and let me live a life of luxury after my retirement, Felt, you said you won't retire, right? I'll have you work really hard for some time, together with me. The time it would take for the royal selection to be settled was three years at the very least. Rom drew back his chin in an exaggerated manner at Felt's demand, which had taken that into account, and said, fine. At that, she internally heaved out a sigh of relief. Although she did not expect him to reject her request, the uneasiness that came from the possibility of it had lingered within her. She would fight whoever turned against her as an enemy, but preferably, she wanted Rom to watch over her from behind. Felt, right. Sorry for saying these things at short notice, but Reinhard said he's planning to leave the capital tomorrow. Apparently, we're going to his home towards the east or something. Rom, House Astria's territory, I see. If ye want to fight through the royal selection, ye have to start from securing the foundation of your team. It's the correct choice, Felt widened her eyes when she heard Rom mutter that out with a hand to his chin, his interpretation was completely identical with what Rienhrat had told her. It was almost as if he knew it without needing an explanation, and Felt scratched her cheek at that. Felt, it's like you know about the royal selection more than me. Rom G. Rom, nonsense. How much longer do you think I've been living compared to ye? It's easy to understand this much with a little bit of thinking, felt, really. Though, I felt like you're really reliable. As expected of my Rom G, she prioritized the sense of security it would bring as the reason for why she wanted Rom to remain in her team, but the indication that he would take a bigger role made her feel as if he would be very trustworthy, felt, that's why we're gonna leave the capital, but are you all right with it? Rom, in the first place, my only personal belonging is this body of mine. I had nothing from the moment the loot house was blown away. If it's about whether my mind is prepared for it or not, then it's a yes, felt, right, it's good if that's the case, but. Did you already hear about it from someone else? Rom, only about leaving the capital. His devotion to ye is pretty admirable, felt, you mean that bastard? Reinhard's face crossed her mind at Rom's mocking manner of speech, had he informed Rom in advance out of consideration? Simply thinking about it made Felt curl her lip into a sneer, however, Rom, you might not like him, but there isn't a knight greater than him out there. Since you'll have to put up with him for a long time, you better find a way to get along with him, Felt, like, putting you between us whenever we talk, Rom, I wonder why you're so open with your hate for him. She could only describe the most important reason for it as how Reinhard had been the largest obstacle, standing between Felt and her reunion with Rom, causing her animosity towards him to be nurtured daily. It was not as if no other reason existed for it, but, Felt, well, I'll think about it because you told me that. I'm gonna go back to my room, but what will you do? Will you come with me? Feeling somewhat strange about having an endless conversation in the hallway, Felt pointed at the door behind Rom. Felt, there's a ton of books he told me to read. So, it'll be really helpful if you could be someone I can talk to. Rom, no, I don't mean to disturb ye while you're studying. I'll at least learn how to pose myself as an old geezer that assists the higher-ups from my predecessors. Felt, ah, you're talking about Gramps and Granny. Right, you don't have friends either, so use this opportunity to get friendly with them. Gramps won't speak, so go together with Granny. Saying that, Felt parted ways with Rom and entered her room. She saw a mountain of books dumped on her desk, containing the materials she had to learn as a ruler, 
all chosen by Reinhard. Felt, he's a really merciless guy. Felt let out a weary sigh at the sight before her, then cracked her neck before walking towards her desk, whilst telling herself that this was a necessary step to move forward, since she had decided to not escape, after all. Part 6 After staring after Felt as she entered her room, Rom breathed out a heavy sigh, by chance, it was simultaneous with the moment Felt had also let out a sigh after looking at her mountain of books, but it was an unknown fact to them, who were inside and outside of the room respectively. On top of that, there was a large difference between the individual emotions embedded into their size. Felt, who had resolved herself to attempt to complete her homework, and Rom's sigh, which harbored remorse and uncertainty. Question mark, it seems like you've endeared yourself to Felt Summer. Question mark, it was when he had distanced himself from Felt's room, wondering what to do from now on as he took a step forward. Upon whirling around towards the voice behind him, he spotted a silhouette approaching from the end of the corridor, making its way towards him with noiseless steps. The shadow was a white-haired, elderly woman who had a straightened posture, the woman felt had called Auntie out of admiration. She was a gentle person, never forgetful of her courtesy and consideration, but the woman currently walking before Rom was a swordswoman, wildly different from her amicable impression. In fact, although she held nothing in her hands, Rom could feel the razor-sharp spirit of the sword stabbing into his entire body. Rom, greetings. I thought I didn't forget to give my thanks after the meal. Auntie, well, well, how are you able to prattle on like that? Have you procured Felt Summer's trust with those insincere words of yours, as usual? If that is so, it seems like your despicable nature hasn't changed. Rom, that's a harsh way of putting it. You talk about me as if you know who I am, but have we even met? I wonder what in the world are ye talking about? The woman narrowed her eyes as Rom cocked his head. The gleam in her eyes was already sharp as a sword, yet it was growing increasingly cutting, on the verge of switching into the will to fight by revealing her withdrawn blade. Rom took one step back from his unexpectedly short-tempered opponent. However, the moment he made that one step, he noticed a different person standing behind him. Conceivably, the person was surrounded by a threatening aura, more so than the elderly woman before him. Question mark, Rom, not only are ye silent, but ye even concealed your presence. I guess there's quite the bunch of dangerous servants here. Although, that lad alone would be enough when it comes to fighting. Auntie, you shall not insult the young master. There won't be a next time. Behind him was the silent gardener, and at his front was a sword-like, elderly woman. Rom's cheeks stiffened slightly at the fact he was trapped between the two, but he waited to see what would be their first move. If he were to act carelessly, then the gardener would be more troublesome than the elderly woman. Rom, you seem pretty hot-tempered. That's your true self, ain't it? Question mark, do, not. Anger my, wife. A low, guttural voice kept Rom at bay as he spoke to the elderly woman. From the hoarseness of the voice, he was able to judge that the gardener was unable to speak rather than refusing to do so. Thinking of the gardener as a voiceless man who was also affiliated with the Astria family, distant memories started to resurface, there used to be a fateful connection between Rom and the Astria family. Inside of that, Rom, I see. I thought I've met ye too somewhere, but ye got that kind of connection. Rom's convinced muttering had slipped out, causing the elderly woman to tighten her expression into a fierce look upon hearing it. As he had thought, the one who easily got emotional was the wife instead of the husband. Rom, it seems like that aspect of ye hasn't changed, Carol Remendis. Carol, H.K.? Where did you learn my? Rom, the people involved at that time, especially the fellows from the kingdom. Most of them are here. The elderly woman held her breath as Rom used a finger to tap his own head. While watching her reaction, Rom gazed out of the window at the garden below. Rom, you probably only caught those three thugs as a part of taking the opportunity to do what ye were doing. That means the person ye were keeping your eyes on throughout the night was me. Carol, you should be more than aware of the reason for that. Rom, it seems like that youngster also knew my true identity, after all. Damn sword demon. You built a pretty nasty family, just as I thought. How irritating. He patted his bald head with the palm of his hand, 
scowling as wrinkles of loathing etched themselves onto his face. It was an expression that he had never shown felt, after she became aware of her surroundings, at least, ever since the day the loot house had been blown away, everything had started taking a turn for the worse and showed no signs of stopping. It was as if Rum's past, something he had wanted to forget no matter what, began advancing on him in a circle all at once, whilst it also felt like what he had discarded was being collected, the turning point in life that had visited felt, his relationship with the Astria family, his fateful connection to the married couple, and everything, Rom, the past is in the past, and war is war. There's nothing I can say aside from that result, Carol, out of all the people, you are saying this? Who do you think would believe your words, Rom, I'm Rom G, a small-time scoundrel who earned a small sum of money by buying and selling off stolen goods in the loot house. I am nothing more, and nothing less. I'm not thinking of using that girl. Felt, he shook his head slowly. Closing his eyes, the memories he had shared with the infant had re-emerged. He had continuously watched over the girl's growth, ever since she had been tiny to the point she could fit in his palm. His resentment and vindictiveness from back then had all been washed away by the days he had spent with the girl. Uncle, can you, keep, your, word? Looking at Rom's eyes, the elderly woman hesitated to pursue his declaration with her words. The person who had asked the question instead of her was the owner of the hoarse voice, while maintaining the piercing look in his gaze, he saw the warrior with a shield within the man, someone who was always beside the sword demon. Rom, can I keep my word, ye ask? Seems like you're misunderstanding something, uncle, Rom, I already made that vow a long time ago. That girl saved my way of life, ye know. Saying that, Rom purposefully turned back to face the husband as he began walking. The gardener did not stop him even as he passed by. The elderly woman did not attempt to strike him from behind with a sword she had hidden at her back, either, even if they did such things, Rom could not blame them. His lack of virtue had shaped his sins, however, if they were granting him a reprieve, then he would do all he could as someone who had brought misfortune to both his enemies and brethren alike in the past, he would give everything he had to his one and only granddaughter. Upon making an uneventful turn at the corner of the hallway, Rum's resolve had shifted into a sincere vow. Part 7 Felt, Uck, Felt grimaced without making an effort to hide it, right as she turned around the corner of the hallway during midnight. There was only one person in this mansion that she would show such a reaction to. Said person forced a smile as he saw her blatant attitude. Question mark. Felt summer. Allow me to question your decision to say, gay upon meeting me. Felt. Doesn't matter. What? Weren't you out somewhere? She said to him, sticking her lips out at how his words sounded like a lecture. Felt had eaten dinner after grappling with the massive amount of teaching materials in her room, but Reinhard had been absent. However, according to Auntie, there was a possibility that he might come home late. Reinhard, I apologize for being unable to join you for dinner. I was required to report my schedule from after tomorrow to the castle, and I also attended to a personal matter. Were there any problems? Felt, those three idiots finally took on a bolder attitude, and they ate loads of food. That's pretty much it. It was after they made their choice to join the Felt camp, but Lackins and his group's voracious appetites were truly impressive. Truthfully, Felt had been worried about Auntie potentially finding them unpleasant, but she seemed content with the fact that the young men enjoyed her cooking, remaining pleased for the entire duration of the meal. Felt had been relieved thanks to that. Anyway, Felt, did you just get back? I wonder if there's any supper left. Gotta asked Granny. Reinhard, thank you for your consideration. Have you just finished taking a bath? He was quick to spot Felt's damp hair and her flushed face. She nodded while fanning herself with a hand, her skin tinted with red because she was fresh out of the bath. Felt, yeah, I'm going to have to say goodbye to the bath in this mansion after today. I also had my energy drained by the heartless amount of homework you gave me, so I guess I was sad about having to leave it. Rain hard, I see. Ah, please do not forget to dry your hair before going to bed. It will become tousled if it remains damp, and it would be such a waste if that happens to your beautiful hair. Felt, mind your own damn business. She stuck her tongue out, 
adding to her own unfriendliness, which caused Reinhard's smile to become increasingly strained. Felt narrowed her eyes at his back as he passed by her, attempting to return to his room with a, all right, I will be taking my leave, then, for some reason, she felt like something was wrong when she compared him to his usual self, felt, hey, Reinhard. Are you feeling down, by any chance, Reinhard? Reinhard's eyes widened slightly as Felt stopped him by calling his name. Seeing how he had reacted with surprise, she herself was also somewhat taken aback, it was not rare for Reinhard to appear surprised or impressed. However, no matter his reaction, there was a constant sense of calmness and placidity attributed to his behavior. Currently, it almost looked like those sorts of barriers had been discarded from his expression. Perhaps, what she said had been an unexpected blow against him in a true sense. Reinhard, may I ask what led to that thought? Felt, eh? Ah, uh, it's not really a big deal. Usually, you would go somewhere, come back, and then start blabbering your head off even though I never asked you to. But today, you aren't even trying to say anything, and you try to wrap up the conversation as quickly as possible. Reinhard, I'm surprised. I have always assumed you disliked me. Felt, just because I notice doesn't mean I don't dislike you. I used to be desperate about trying to best you every single day, to begin with. If anything, I was observing you carefully to see if you'll let your guard down. Felt denied his suspicions by wording it strongly, unable to bear the thought of him having a bizarre misunderstanding. Just then, Reinhard gave her a vaguely stiff smile, responding with an unusual, I understand. And then, Reinhard, you do not have any plans after this, do you, Felt Summer? Felt, nah. I'm planning to sleep in early to prepare for Tomor. Reinhard, would you like to speak with me in my room for a little while? There is something I would like you to hear Ab, Felt, listen to me, damn it. She protested at how Reinhard had moved the conversation along without her permission, but he did not respond. He started walking away, completely set on welcoming her into his room, Felt, Felt could simply return to her room, treating the matter as something that was none of her business. In fact, that was how she had been acting towards him so far. However, there was a case where Rom had provided her with advice, that she would have to put up with him for a long time. That she should find a way to get along with him, Felt, oh man, guess I don't have a choice, shrugging her shoulders that were still warm from the bath, Felt followed after Reinhard. His room was at the end of the corridor, positioned precisely on the opposite side of the mansion from Felt's room. Reinhard, here it is, Felt, ha, huh. striding through the doorway as Reinhard opened the door, Felt stepped into his room for the first time. She glanced around, surveying the interior of the room, but she was greeted by a dull place. The layout was identical to her own room, and the arrangement of furniture was also quite similar. He had the same bed as her, and a worn-out desk was placed at the edge of the room. The bookshelf next to the desk was filled with books that looked humorless and boring, and a nondescript painting was hung on the wall. Reinhard's room was organized and tidied thoroughly, giving it the feel of a typical first-class student's room. Reinhard, it may not appear like anything special, but, felt, you're right, it's nothing interesting. Reinhard, you are quite critical, he forced a smile as he replied, somehow regaining his usual relaxed mood without Felt's knowledge. She did not mind it, but it would be tiresome for her if he constructed a wall between her and himself, even though she had accepted his invitation. Letting her gaze travel around with those thoughts in mind, Felt set her eyes upon a part of the wall. Only that place had a subtly different impression compared to the room of a first-class student. It was a sword that was hung on the wall. It was not that big, on the small side, in fact. It was elaborately embellished, but it seemed like it would not be too practical. From Felt's point of view, her first thought was that it looked decently expensive. Felt, what's that sword? It looks totally different from the one you're always carrying around. Reinhard, ah, yes. Unlike the dragon sword, this is merely a nameless sword. Saying that, Reinhard caressed the hilt of the sword fitted into a white scabbard, hanging by his waist. The sword he carried with him at all times was one that was tied to an anecdote, which rumored that it had slain the witch. Compared to such a weapon, any famous, renowned sword would surely be a downgrade, but, Reinhard, my father had prepared this sword for me, 
early in my childhood, felt, ha, huh, hearing his words, felt narrowed her eyes at the polished sword that was neatly tended to, yesterday at the castle, she had met Reinhard's father just for a brief moment. They did not stumble across each other at the area of the royal selection, but he had paid her a visit in the waiting room before it began, to be honest, he was not a likable person. To be blunt, she ought to regard his character with scorn, that was the very reason why she felt as if she could not say anything positive, nor negative about how Reinhard perceived his own decision to decorate his wall with the gift he had received from such a man, felt, anyway, you read a lot of books that I can't understand, felt changed the subject, pulling out several books from the bookshelf before lying down on the bed without being advised to, and then flipping through the pages. Every one of the books were either historical or academic, witnessing Felt's posture, Reinhard brought a hand to his own forehead, Reinhard, your manners are unbecoming for a lady, Felt Summer, Felt, even a real lady wouldn't care about how others would look at her, when she's in her mansion and fresh out of the bath, Reinhard, that is not quite true. You must start thinking about it as such, Felt, where did you learn that it's not quite true, huh? was it written in these excessively long books? Sounds way too fishy, Reinhard held his tongue at Felt, who had sat up whilst disturbing the sheets. Whether it was because she blamed him for his lack of evidence, or because she had mentioned the credibility of his books, it was uncertain which one had struck home with him, Felt, from the spine of the books, you only have these kinds of stuff in your bookshelf, huh? Why don't you get more interesting books, since there's no reason for why you can't? don't you know how to have fun, Reinhard, books exist to garner knowledge. You yourself have learned how to read and write because, felt, Romji only put it all into my head because he said it'll be useful. Actually, it turned out pretty well since I became able to read signboards and letters. He also taught me how to calculate numbers to make sure no one could cheat me out of my reward after doing my job. Though, that was necessary for me to survive, Reinhard felt, you didn't have to be cornered into a desperate situation in order to live, right? That's why your way of thinking is kind of freaky. You're correct, but you're only correct. It's not like you wanted the books that are in your bookshelf, am I right? Reinhard fell silent. Did he lack a rebuttal because he could not find the words to make one, or because verbal abuse was swirling within his chest, which he was directing towards felt, that was all right. In fact, it would be more normal for him to be furious at a little girl after she had said all she wanted to say to him without restraint, if she could catch a glimpse of Reinhard's true colours, which were not reflected in the atmosphere of his room. Reinhard, as of now, I am at a loss for words. I will return a proper response to you eventually, felt. Right. Then, that's fine. If he did not attempt to deceive her with sugar-coated words, then that was good enough. After that, Felt sat cross-legged on the bed, and Reinhard pulled the chair near his desk, sitting down in front of her, Felt, and? What do you have to tell me, Reinhard, allow me to give you a quick report. Today at the castle, I received an official announcement of my appointment. For the next three years until the conclusion of the royal selection, I will be transferred from the post of a royal guard to the position of the knight who will be at your side. What will be of me after that will be determined by the course of the royal selection, but I look forward to being able to work with you. Although I am very inexperienced, felt, quit it with your overly formal stuff. I already heard about it yesterday, as well as after the duel, to the point my ears were starting to itch. Originally, Reinhard belonged to the royal guard of the kingdom, and in principle, he was not permitted to leave from his duties. However, Exceptions were made for the knights of the candidates who participated in the current royal selection, allowing them three years of freedom, in other words, they were entrusted with the role of the sole knight of their mistress, Felt was uninterested in the trivial matters that accompanied such a fact, and she had displayed that in a curt manner. However, a slightly somber look had crossed Reinhard's face during their exchange, she recalled yesterday's events, thinking the change in his expression could be tied to a topic related to the castle, another topic related to the royal selection, or, felt, by any chance, do you look sad because of something related to yesterday's duel, Reinhard, I cannot deny that. No, it is related, the duel, 
Felt had brought up a dispute that had occurred behind the scenes, whilst the royal selection candidates had been delivering their speeches of their respective ideals and policies. Simply put, it concerned a disagreement between fellow knights of the candidates, but the circumstances of the incident and the positions of the two contributors were quite complicated. Specifically, the knight who had been handed a crushing defeat was not an unfamiliar person to Felt. Felt, you're familiar with both of them, right? I only know that boy, though. Reinhard, Julius has taken responsibility for the disturbance, and the knight commander has given him the order for suspension. Fortunately, he is unscathed, but... I believe he is reproaching himself for his dishonorable actions, Felt, ha, huh. the knight that had been mentioned was a person who had given Felt a very knight-like impression at first glance, although the reputation of being the knight among knights was attributed to Reinhard, from what Felt had seen, she thought it was far more suitable for the other knight to be described as such, was there a problem with the knight's behavior or the way he spoke? Felt could not bring herself to approve of what he had done as well, however, she also could not really agree with how Reinhard had decided to perceive his fellow knight's behavior as, reflecting upon his own dishonorable actions. That knight was not necessarily regretful about it, Reinhard, and, this is about Subaru, who is our mutual friend, but he is currently visiting the mansion of another candidate, Duchess Crush Carsten. Although, I do not know the reason for why he is staying there, felt, putting aside whether that boy's our friend, why did things turn out like that? He fought for the half-elf girl, right? To be exact, she thought the boy had fought for his self-righteousness because he wanted to believe that, however, though he had been placed in a rather complex position, Subaru was someone identical to a saviour to Felt. It was true that the incident with the bowel hunter would have gone south if he had been absent, as Felt's thoughts reached a certain point, an awful possibility occurred to her, Felt, this is just a maybe but you didn't go to console the boy, right, Reinhard, no, you are correct. I believe his physical and mental state has been driven into a corner, felt, uck, you really had to do that, just as I thought. Don't you understand that you're only rubbing salt into his wound by doing that? Looking at Reinhard's puzzled expression, felt sympathized with Subaru for the first time. She was able to figure out why Reinhard appeared discouraged because of that, felt, even I would sympathize with Ni Chan. He refused to meet with you, didn't he, Reinhard, he did not refuse to see me, at least. However, my visit did not yield a pleasant farewell. It is an unfortunate result, considering we will be unable to see each other for a while. Felt was once again astounded by Reinhard's display of his dejected feelings. Pained by a hostile disagreement with his friend. His reaction to it was akin to a human's. Felt, Seems like even someone like you has a human side, acting dejected because you guys parted ways without making up. Have you known that boy for a long time or something, Reinhard? No, I met him on the same day I met you. Yesterday, when I met him once again at the area of the royal selection, it was the first time we had seen each other since that day, felt, what? Then your relationship with him is thin as a piece of paper, Reinhard, whether I knew someone for a long time or not is unrelated to my respect for them. Subaru has something I don't, and that alone is unmistakably worth my respect. Nothing is special about acknowledging a person that one finds likable as a friend. Felt, it sounds like you're mocking him when you say that. Maybe Ni Chan thought of what you said as something like that? Felt muttered out with a look of exasperation at Reinhard, who had uttered such a pure, guileless opinion with a straight face. Looking at his stiffened cheeks which had resulted from Felt's words, it was too easy to imagine how Subaru had reacted, of course it would turn out like that. She felt like she had completely understood, and nothing else, felt, so, the regret is nagging at you, huh? What are you gonna do about it, Reinhard, what I am going to do about it, felt, I won't mind even if you put off our departure to your home. If you can't concentrate on your job because you're too worried about not making peace with him before leaving, that is, it could not really be described as compassion, but felt could be considerate to that extent, in fact, it was true that Reinhard had been distressed to the point it had been written on his face. If he could not perform well because of that, then felt would be at a loss with how to deal with him. Reinhard, no, I am grateful for your consideration. However, 
I am fine. Even so, Reinhard had shaken his head at Felt's offer. Reinhard, I cannot afford to delay your first step because of my own issues. Felt, I'm saying it's hard to take the first step. Reinhard, moreover, I am somewhat able to put my mind at ease, since you have been attentive to what I had to say. Felt, you don't understand. Felt attempted to reprimand him as such, and was rendered speechless as his lips loosened into a smile. His constant look of placidity remained stripped away, however, it felt like his genuine smile was there, beyond the walls that were taken down. Felt, well, I guess that's fine. Saying that, Felt bounced her hips as she jumped off of the bed. And then, she stood on her tiptoes in front of Reinhard, who was looking up at her. Felt, we're done here, right? It was a good way to kill time before going to bed, at least. I also found out my great knight was more useless than I thought. Reinhard, useless. That is the first time someone has evaluated me as such, felt, then I'll say it to you for all the times it went unsaid. Useless, 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 felt let out a yawn after repeating the word three times in a row. And then, Reinhard forced a laugh as he rose from his seat, opening his room's door for felt, feeling as if he would follow her to her room if she did not say anything, Felt jammed a finger towards the tip of Reinhard's nose right as they entered the hallway. Felt, don't follow me. I'm going to sleep. You better hurry up and go to bed and forget about it. Reinhard, I believe letting it slip from my memory would be an unfaithful act. Felt, when tomorrow comes, it'll be no use even if you bring your annoyances from today to the next day. The next time you see him, you better apologize to him properly. Until then, at least try your best to study how to apologize with your books. Shoving the books into Reinhard's chest as he gazed at her with widened eyes, Felt pushed the bewildered knight back into his own room. After that, she attempted to leave without saying anything else, and then, Reinhard, Felt summer, upon being called on, Felt held back the urge to click her tongue as she halted in her tracks. Felt, what? Reinhard, thank you very much. I would be honored if I am allowed to have a moment of your time to speak with you again. Felt, you, Reinhard had invited her to his room at night with an innocent look. Felt stuck her tongue out, one half of her exasperated, and the other half of her flushing at his defenselessness. Felt, who cares, you idiot. Huffing that out, she began stomping towards her room. The lingering sensation from taking a bath had already disappeared, but a vague heat had remained in her cheeks. Part 8. The next day, after welcoming their last morning in the capital, Felt was taken along by Reinhard, having finished their preparation to depart to the Astria territory, where the house Reinhard had been born in was located. Auntie, please take good care of yourself, Felt Summer. Felt, thanks for having me, Granny, Gramps. Stay healthy, you too. She would be parting ways with Uncle and Auntie, who had been nothing but kind to her during these two months plus a few days. With auntie having teary eyes, and uncle bowing silently while they were seeing her off, felt endured the feeling of being about to cry, auntie, our granddaughters are residing in the main residence. We have addressed a letter to them to make sure they serve you well, so please make them work hard, felt, your grandchildren, ha. Huh. I'm looking forward to meeting them. And yeah, thanks, through these two months, Felt's life under house arrest had started against her will. However, auntie and uncle had played a large part in why her life in the mansion did not turn into a bad memory. That was why her gratitude was sincere, I want to see them again. The way she could think like that was also genuine, Gaston, damn, holy crap. What the heck is this dragon carriage? It might be obvious but nobles are amazing, Lackins, it's not even something to be scared of, more than that, can someone make sure this isn't a dream? Camberley, leave it me to me. Gah. Ouch. I twisted my own cheek and it feels like it's burning. The three idiots who were in the same carriage had put their stupidity on full display, making Felt laugh during their trip. Various hardships were awaiting the three even after arriving at the Astria mansion, but that was a story for another time. Rom, anyway. I'm still not used to seeing you dressed like that, felt, I didn't have a choice. I don't like it either, but I was told that no one knows who would see me even if I'm on the carriage. I can't decline if Granny begged me to wear it, Rom, 
Well, ye can't be wearing my handmade rags forever. It suits ye, felt, humph. Felt turned away her reddened face as Rom complimented her on how she looked in a dress. She had plenty of worries, but she could be at ease if Rom would stay beside her. She was able to reaffirm that, and then, Reinhard, this will be about after our arrival, but I believe undue hardships may be placed on you initially. I cannot proclaim this loudly, but the Astria territory, felt, save the bad news for later. I had more fun with your story of your own failure from yesterday night, Reinhard, my story of my failure, remaining clothed in her dress, felt through her head back leaned backwards at Reinhard's look of surprise, she grinned as if she was implying that even if one's outer appearance could be changed, their inner being, their core personality would stay the same, felt, you should look for something interesting, too. You'd better, if you're my knight. Don't keep making me approach you. Isn't that your job, the knight among knights? Reinhard, he fell silent for a moment as Felt showed off her fang with her smile. Subsequently, he nodded after fully processing her words, Reinhard, I understand. I swear upon my oath as a knight to make an effort, Felt, this is no good, probably, as Felt shrugged her shoulders, seeking agreement, Rom and the three idiots reacted with exasperation. Reinhard appeared to be offended, but Felt only gave him a sideways glance as she gazed out of the window. The dragon carriage ran slowly across the stone pavement, moving outside of the capital, to Felt, who was leaving her birthplace for the first time in her life, a full-scale something was about to begin, the knight among knights, and a candidate to accede the throne for the next era, who had a complete lack of self-awareness, bringing an elderly man with special circumstances and three thugs along with them, the carriage was heading straight towards the east of the capital, like that, their story would be taking a leap outside of the capital. Not to mention that they would be cut off from their pathway to become concerned with a major incident that would occur a few days later, one which would shake the very kingdom, but that was a story for another boy, another story of their own was waiting for Felt and her team, after all.